Hi, my name's Dave, and I'm back in the shop after about a week or so. I had some things I had to take care of. Unfortunately, I had to go to a memorial service for a longtime friend. I've known him for over 40 years, him and his family. At any rate, I'm back in the shop, and uh, I'm going to take you through the sum of the installation process of this new DRO that I just put on my lathe. It, uh, it, it turned out to be a tedious process and, and there were times when uh, I just stopped videoing, video, videotaping so that uh, I, I could concentrate on what I was doing and not have to worry about whether, whether my head was in the way or whatnot. Uh, it's not a hard installation as much as it is trying to figure out where you want to locate items, where you can locate items. Uh, not everything is as clear cut as it is on the videos from the company I bought it from. <clears throat> now I bought it from DRO Pros. Uh, it's DROPros.com and they have excellent videos on their website of a step-by-step -step installation of, of this DRO. So it, it's all well and good for the type of lathe that they had. Uh, I ran into some issues with this lathe and I'm sure each lathe is going to be its unique situation, its own unique situation. At any rate, um, there, there is some video of what I did and there's a lot that I didn't video. Uh, I just came back at the end and, and showed you the end result. And like I said, the, the reason being, uh, it's, it's a tedious process. You can watch every step of the installation on the DRO Pro's website and, and you can see exactly what it would take if you care to put one on your machine. Uh, I, I highly recommend them. They're, they're uh, run, the, the, the whole company is owned and run by veterans. And that, uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran myself, and that meant something to me. It may not mean something to everybody, but it did to me. So I wanted to deal with, with people that have served their country. At any rate, uh, I'm going to apologize now for the lack of content on this, but it's it's something. I haven't put a video up in a while and, and I should have gotten to it sooner. Uh, now that I have the DRO installed, uh, there are some projects on the drawing board that I need to finish. Uh, so until then, I hope you enjoy what little there is here. Uh, Leave me some comments, subscribe if you will, I would appreciate that, and uh, let your friends know about my channel. It's a, it's a burgeoning channel. Um, I've only got a few subscribers, so the more the merrier. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy. Hi, my name's Dave. I'm back down in the shop. Uh, I was doing a, a project last week. Uh, I didn't film it, but what I was doing was uh, trying to make a uh, draw bar for my, uh, my Logan lathe. I have a piece of carbon steel tubing here that, uh, I don't know if you can see those threads in there, at any rate, this is, that was only my second attempt at, attempt at doing internal threads. And I got it done. Uh, I just found it a little difficult controlling depth of cut and uh, all of that. Uh, and, and as you can see here, uh, I managed to get it done. And it, it just fits real well. I was, <laughs> I was happy as, as to how it came out. Okay, so that's going to be the start of my draw bar, or that is the start of my draw bar. 
But in the process, I thought, you know, I've been putting off putting a DRO on that lathe. I have one on my milling machine, and I love it. So I start looking around, and I came across the uh, DRO Pros. And what I really liked about them is they are they are vets, and uh, it, it's a business entirely run by veterans. So that right there uh, pointed me in their direction. I'm a Vietnam veteran, so anytime I can help out a fellow vet, you know, I, I'm just all for it. At any rate. Uh, talking to them, uh, as you can see, uh, they have this. Uh, they have several different kits, <clears throat> and I decided to go with a uh, two-axis DRO with magnetic scales. I have glass scales on my mill, and where they work pretty well, uh, I'm not in love with them. Let's put it that way. So I ordered uh, the magnetic scales, and that's what this project is going to be about. The, uh, the big brown truck arrived today and brought me uh, brought me the uh, this nice box here full of DRO parts. Um, you want to go on their website DROPros.com and look at the different setups that they have and uh, be pay particular attention to which display you decide to get. I was going to go for the cheaper display <clears throat> only to find out that in order to zero the X and, or it's actually what's it the X and Z axis on on the DRO uh, it, requires several steps. It can be done, but it requires several steps. And this one has a, a few more features on it. This is a, a little bit more expensive, but it has uh, the X0 and the Z0 keys on it. And some other functions that you can, you can accomplish with the other scale, from what I understand, but it's kind of menu driven. This is some keys on there. Um, but this is the start of this project to install it on, on my uh, Logan lathe. So I don't know how much of it I will uh, actually produce as a film, uh, but I'm going to try. Uh, it, it's kind of one of those things where you're, you look like a monkey making love to a football, you know, trying to climb all over that lathe to get things uh, lined up and, and uh, centered and all that. At any rate, we're about to get started, so we'll see you back here soon. Hi, here's an update on what I've accomplished so far in, in this uh, project. I decided that I almost never use uh, the traveling steady rest, so I'm going to mount the, uh, the scale on the right side of the cross slide. Now if I ever have to adjust the gibbs, that means i got to take all of this apart. But it's only going to be a couple of screws, so we'll deal with that as we come to it. I had to take the mounting block and move the holes over uh, towards the inside in order to match up with the size of the screw and the location of the screws that were previously used for the uh, traveling steady rest. So I got that accomplished. That's, that's down here. Okay. And then the next thing I have to do or had to do was determine the length of travel on this so that the wipers on the reed head didn't bottom out against the uh, the end cap. And in doing that, 
uh, if you look at uh, DRO Pro's installation videos, uh, they make reference to um, X min and X max. X minimum is the minimum length. Now this is how long. Uh -uh, man, maybe you can't see that. Uh, this is how long this used to be. And I had to cut it down to this size. Uh, what I had determined was that uh, when I have this back all the way out, this needed to be further back than the flat on my cross slide. My cross slide has a taper back here. Okay, this is this has the uh, the telescopic uh, taper attachment on it, and for whatever reason, they made this piece um, taper towards the rear. But they also reduce the thickness of, of this taper in here so that I can't get this last mounting screw on there. So what I came up with was an aluminum uh, plate that I'm going to put behind this. Now it's going to increase my thickness by better than an eighth of an inch, but that's the way it's got to be. Alright, so my next step is going to be to mount this aluminum plate onto the cross slide. And what that's going to give me is, is an extension back over this end, uh, which is already an inch into the taper. But it's going to be straight out and I'll be able to mount the scale out there. So my next project is to mount this aluminum plate uh, in, in the proper location and then mount the scale. So again this this is kind of an awkward place to work. Uh, I, I would highly recommend that you go out and uh, and look at the DROPros.com uh, there they have the installation videos on their website and he goes through this you know very, very succinctly, you know, very, very good. Um, uh, I'm going to be tied up here for probably about an hour or so trying to locate this, drill holes, tap them. Uh, nothing you need to be hanging around and, and just being bored watching me fight with this thing. So after I get the scale mounted, I'll bring it back. Well, as expected, I had a fair amount of trouble installing this. Um, the backer plate that I, I put in here needed to have four screws drilled and tapped into the cross slide. Uh, it, the drilling and tapping wasn't all that hard because this is just uh, cast metal. So it, it went pretty well and even the tapping went as well as could be expected. The problem with the tapping was not being able to turn the tap handle in between these uh, the ways here. Uh, so I spent a lot of time shifting the Tommy bar back and forth. Uh, at any rate I got it done and I have it installed. I ran a dial indicator across here and this is within one thousandth or less uh, front to back and I have the pickup adjusted according to the instructions I temporarily hooked up the display hooked the cable into the display and everything is fine it, it looks good so uh, the last thing to do here is to cut and fit the cover for over here. And um, again, I'll do that off camera because it's just repetitive type work that you've seen before. You know, it, it's nothing new. 
and I just wanted to bring you up to date on the installation process. And uh, once I'm done this, then I need to I need to get behind the machine, which isn't going to be easy because what you don't see from there is behind the machine is a 24 inch wide belt sander. Okay. And uh, that's a dual drum belt sander. Eventually I want to get it out of here. I want to sell it. Uh, and I've been thinking about packing it up and taking it out of here, storing it over in the barn. So at any rate, that's where we are. Uh, I'll give you an update later on.